You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. So Brian Kelly did meet with reporters while he was at the Senior Bowl. It wasn't an uh, official thing. It was like a gaggle of reporters while he was standing there on the field. And um, it, it's odd because it's been a really busy offseason for Brian Kelly. I mean, he fired the entire defensive staff, replaced them. He's on a tear on the recruiting trail uh, the for 24 and obviously for 25. And we hadn't heard from Brian Kelly since the bowl game. Like, he's been just... Uh... So, anyway, it was interesting. It's the first time that we've had had to talk to him. and Or that reporters have had a chance to talk to him. He did talk about this this busy offseason that they've had since the end of, end of the bowl game. Obviously, um, we're getting to the tail end of recruiting. It's, it's been, a, obviously, a whirlwind because there's so many things going on. Transfer portal, NIL, retention of your own players, development of your own players. But I think we've done a really good job. We've had to hire some new coaches as well. And that's been part of the offseason. But uh, I think we're in a really good place right now as we get into February. And in a week or so, we'll be able to really focus on the team uh, that's on campus. And that's a good thing. Yeah, man, uh, you get past the, the February signing date, and then it's really about starting to gear up towards spring football, and you can really start to get ready for the 2024 season. The guys, as he mentioned, that are there. And some guys who may not be there yet are guys who are there now that won't be there when LSU tees it up and kicks it off in Las Vegas coming up in, uh, on, in, on September the 1st. But I think of greater consequences. This is the first time Brian Kelly has spoken about the staff hires and the decision to let the defensive staff go and replace all of it. So let's we'll take these sort of one at a time. Um, let's start with the defensive side of the ball and the decision to bring back Blake Baker. Here was Brian Kelly. Well, I got a chance to spend a little bit of time with Blake, but anytime there's a transition, it's very difficult to, you know, commit to anybody because you're you're bringing in a whole new philosophy and a, and a way of doing things. So, you know, I was impressed with him, and then obviously the work that he did at Missouri and, and as an SEC opponent, we got a chance to see him firsthand and um, was impressed with his work, his ability to recruit, and then certainly the relationships that he built when he was at LSU made him a logical choice so by the way two things one the the last part there where brian kelly said the relationships he built at lsu made him a logical choice there were a lot of people at lsu that that beat the drum for blake baker to come back because brian kelly didn't know blake baker blake baker was here for one year they never crossed paths coaching before and as you just heard him say in a transition when brian kelly turned over not just the on-field staff but like 40 staff members he didn't get to know blake baker I've used the phrase, he threw the baby out with the bathwater. And that happened with, with Corey Raymond, with Blake Baker, with Austin Thomas, all guys that are back now. But it, it's not a knock on Blake Baker. It, a lot That happens literally everywhere, every time there's a new coaching hire. When you have turnover, there are casualties of that hire. When good coaches are let go, that, that is without exception, without fail. Uh, so I anyway, but he also talked about Blake Baker and the relationships and the job he did at Missouri. Remember when Matt House got fired, all the shade that a lot of the current players were throwing at him on Twitter? And we contrasted that with the praise Blake Baker got when he left Missouri for LSU. Eli Drinkwitz, a lot of the Missouri players going to bat for Blake Baker. Just such a contrast with how those two situations ended. Uh, Jim Nagy, the executive director of the Senior Bowl, tweeted about Missouri defensive lineman Darius Robinson, who was one of the big standouts of the week. Well, Blake Baker went and quote tweeted Jim Nagy, practice execution equals game day reality. Extremely proud of you at Darius Six Robinson. So you quote tweeted him there. So, I mean, the point is Blake Baker has great uh, goodwill and has built up great relationships with those players, which is just a dramatically different reality than what LSU had here with Matt House. I'm not trying to like, you know, to 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 tap dance on Matt House's grave here, his proverbial grave as a coach at LSU. You know what I'm talking about. But it, it's a very, very clear contrast when you illustrate the two and how they went. So you bring in Blake Baker, and you also obviously brought in Bo Davis on the defensive line. And here is what Brian Kelly had to say about bringing Bo Davis back to LSU. 
You know, when we talk about the best defensive line coaches uh, in the country, his name keeps coming up. And so I got a chance to spend some time with him and, and talk to him about coming back to LSU. And, you know, it wasn't an easy decision. He was at a great school and a great program. But I think the ability to come here and come back to LSU was attractive to him. The ability to build something here, great. I think it was attractive. And certainly uh, teaming him with Kevin Peoples, who was an outstanding defensive line coach who sometimes gets into the shadows but is in his own right one of the best in the business i think we've got two outstanding coaches there that uh, are going to do a great job we'll see how they divvy up the responsibilities and that's something that on game day likely won't matter as much it's more i think it matters as far as preparation how you handle practice like does kevin peoples take the defensive ends and bo davis take the defensive tackles we'll learn whenever they hit the practice field for spring i mean the kelly is allowed the media great access so we'll have an opportunity to see that firsthand, but it's not that dissimilar from what they did this year. I mean, you had your you had Pete Jenkins, or before that, John Jancic taking the tackles, and then and in some in some cases the the ends as well, and then you had Bob Diaco taking the Jack linebackers, or you or you could look at it the other way, and you could say, well, you had Matt Howells taking the off ball linebackers and Bob Diaco taking the, the Jack linebackers. So it, it's not uncommon. It's it's not that different from where you have a cornerbacks coach and a safeties coach. So. How they divvy up those responsibilities during practice is probably the most interesting thing, but mostly what you want are guys that are technically sound, can coach their position, and obviously can recruit. And you've gotten a a major windfall already from those additions. Offensively, the decision to stay in-house and promote Joe Sloan and Cortez Hankton as co-OCs, again, the thing we saw in the bowl game worked well. LSU put up 500 yards and 35 points in the bowl game, and Sloan has been an OC before, and Hankton left Georgia to come to LSU looking for advancement and promotion, and he got it here. Here was Brian Kelly on the co-OCs. Joe will take the chief responsibilities and, and certainly be the play caller. Cortez will have a major role as well. But at the end of the day, if, if you don't like the play call, you can see me and you can see Joe. So, uh, you know, I think we'll have a clear delineation in terms of the roles. Both of them are outstanding. Joe will obviously still have the quarterbacks, and I think it'll be a team approach. So team approach, remember that's something Brian Kelly also said during, yeah, it was around November, and I asked him the question after one of the games about the job Mike Denbrock had done as the offensive coordinator, and he praised Denbrock, but also was quick to praise Sloan as the quarterback's coach for developing Jaden and Frank Wilson and Cortez. Now, it was a collaborative game, uh, game week uh, coming up with a game plan, and that's true, absolutely. Game day play call it. And I, I, by the way, I think they have plenty of brilliant offensive minded people that will come up with great game plans. My question is the thing, the unknown right now is when you're talking about in game play calling, sequencing, flow, how does that go? That's what we'll find out whenever we get into game days to see how Joe Sloan does doing that. And uh, one more from Brian Kelly again, meeting with reporters Thursday out at the Senior Bowl, just the feedback that he's gotten on these assistant hires. When we're doing our vetting process and finding coaches, we're taking everything into consideration. We're listening to all forms of social media. We're listening to the, the reports that we hear, and, and we're doing a deep dive on everything. So if there's lots of negative noise out there, um, we hear it. It doesn't mean it's going to influence a final decision, but we're listening to everything. Everything that came up on, on the staff members that we've hired has been very, very positive. It's hard to go any other direction than positive with with the job they've done here. Now they got to go execute on it, but most importantly, you got to get players. You got to get your roster, particularly the defensive side of the ball back looking like it has when LSU's been a championship roster and you got the right guys to do it. Uh, Brian Kelly there at the Senior Bowl talking about his staff additions for the first time. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.